Well, there's more news on 3news.com. Make some time and visit 3news.com. This is Ghana Tonight. Coming up next, does the closure of investigations into this Airbus scandal by the special prosecutor bring finality to the matter? That's a question that we're asking tonight. And certainly if you're, if you're new to the party for the NDC and then also for the uninitiated, the special prosecutor's office says it has ended. This is the road that has ended with as far as the Airbus scandal is concerned because their investigation has not amounted to much to be able to prosecute any public official or public officers for corruption and corruption-related offences in this Airbus scandal that has been running for quite a while now. Now, the special prosecutor addressed the press earlier today giving details of observations, and then also some conclusions made and some recommendations as well, which I'll be pointing you to a few of them. But first of all, let's take a listen to the special prosecutor earlier today when he addressed the press about this. And if you are summarily be aware, Ghana bought these three military airplanes, C-295X from, from Airbus. The nation received the first C-295 in November 2011. The second aircraft was received in April 2012 and the third in November 2015 became a subject of investigation, and this is what the OSP has been saying. Take a look. The OSP confirms the identity of the following individuals. Government official one, individual one. The individual described as government official one by the UK court and individual one by the US court is John Dramani Mahama. He is a citizen of Ghana. He was the vice president of Ghana from 7 January 2009 to 24 July 2012. He was the president of Ghana from 24 July 2012 to 7 January 2017. His tenure of office as the vice president of Ghana coincided with the time frame of the UK and US investigation of the first Airbus campaign for the sale of two C-295 aircraft to Ghana. His term of office as the president of Ghana occurred during the UK and US investigation time frame of the second Airbus campaign for the sale of one C-29 aircraft to Ghana. Intermediary 5, Consultant 4. The individual described as Intermediary 5 by the UK court and Consultant 4 by the US court is known both as Samuel Adam Mahama and Samuel Adam Foster. He is a UK citizen and also a citizen of Ghana. He is a younger brother of the full blood of John Dramani Mahama, former president of Ghana, referred to above. His birth name is actually Samuel Adam Mahama. He was adopted from Ghana and taken to the UK in 1972 by a British missionary couple. He assumed the last name of his adopted parents, Foster, at age nine. He lost touch with his Ghanaian family until 1997. Intermediary six. Consultant 5. The individual described as intermediary 6 by the UK court and consultant 5 by the US court is Philip Sean Middlemiss. He is a UK citizen. He is an English television and radio actor and businessman. He is a close friend of Samuel Adam Foster, otherwise known as Samuel Adam Mahama. Intermediary 7. The individual described as intermediary 7 by the UK court is Leanne Sarah Davis. She is a UK citizen. She is a partner to Philip Sean Middlemans, referred to above. On 30 April 2020, the OSP requested the assistance of Interpol for the issuance of a red notice for the apprehension of Samuel Adam Foster, also known as Samuel Adam Mahama, Philip Sean Middlemans. Leanne Sarah Davis, and Sarah Fenno, the spouse of Samuel Adam Foster. The red notice was published by Interpol on 10 July 2020. On 13 May 2020, the OSP sought and obtained warrants from the circuit court Accra for the arrest of Samuel Adam Foster, Sean, Philip Sean Middlemiss, Leanne Sarah Davis, and Sarah Fenno. Well, so this red notice, the Interpol red notice that the special prosecutor talks about for the arrest 
of the brother of the flag bearer of the NDC. Now the social prosecutor says that red notice has been withdrawn. It's written to Interpol to withdraw that red notice because this case has come to an end, essentially. And th this deals, I'm talking about the, the three military aircrafts, that's the crust of this whole you know, Airbus conversation, covering them were argued at the time to be in line with the 2009 to 2012 strategic plan of the Ghana Armed Forces. Now, it was approved by Parliament, but then again, not without a heated debate in Parliament, as we recall. But after all of this, this is what the special prosecutor said in his observations. Take a look at this. He says, first of all, investigation found no evidence that the former president, John Dramani Mahama, was involved or played any role in the procurement and maintenance of the agency relationship between Airbus and Foster and his associates. Foster, in this case, is the brother of the former president or the flag bearer of the NDC. And the OSP also said they found no evidence that suggests that the involvement of Foster as an intermediary of Airbus and the direct communication and meetings between the former president and officials of Airbus to close the deal amounted to any corruption and corruption-related offense. This second point it's, it's instructive because this matter has been heavily politicized. It's been a major area of politics, especially when the MPP is talking about corruption, specifically against the, the flag bearer of the NDC. So this is the OSP's verdict on this matter, that there was no corruption and corruption-related offense in, in that regard. Also, it ought reasonably to, be, to have occurred to a former president, John Mahama, and the government of Ghana that the familial relationship between the former president and Foster were bound to raise reasonable suspicions of improper conduct and dealings. So this is where the OSP is pointing to that underlying issue of conflict of interest. So he makes the point in point three that to the extent that there was some familial relationship between the former president, his brother, there was definitely going to be some reasonable grounds or some reasonable grounds for suspicion about improper conduct and dealings. Also, the OSP has no evidentiary basis upon which to conclude that Samuel Adam Foster and his associates acted as conduits of bribery between the employees of Airbus and the former president, John Dramani Mahama. That also clears him. The next point is that the OSP says he found no evidentiary basis that suggests that Samuel Adam Foster and his associates received payments from Airbus with the intention of bribing John Dramani Mahama. The OSP also says he found no evidentiary basis that suggests that former President Mahama or any other public official was paid bribes by Samuel Adam Foster, also known as Samuel Adam Mahama and his associates in respect of the purchase. And also, the last observation he makes is that there was no evidentiary basis that suggests that he, the former president, Mahama, or any other public official was induced to improperly favor or did improperly favor Airbus in respect of the purchase. These are the very notable standout observations that the special prosecutor makes and which he put out earlier today. Now, if you look at the other specific issues that he talks about, which borders on the further actions that he wants or he's expecting to be taking, special prosecutor is directing the closure of the OSP investigation into this alleged bribery of high-ranking Ghanaian officials by Airbus through the intermediaries. Also, he says the OSP will not institute criminal proceedings against any person in respect of this investigation. Continues that to the extent that the special prosecutor is directing officers of the OSP to rescind the emphasis on rescind the 13 May 2020 warrants of arrest obtained for the arrest of Samuel Adam Foster, that's the brother of the former president, flag bearer of the NDC, and his associates. And 8th, the 8th August 2024, the special prosecutor notified 
Interpol, that is today, a notification has already been sent to Interpol for the withdrawal of the red notice in respect of Samuel Adam Foster and, and his associates. So essentially, this, this, this spells the closure of the case. Let, let's put it that way. And that's the OSP saying, look, I've, I've come to the end of the road on this matter. I don't have enough basis, as it were, information to prosecute anybody on criminal or corruption and corruption-related offenses. Joyce Bauer Mokhtari, a spokesperson for the former president, John Dramani Mahama, since this pronouncement and declaration by the OSP earlier today, the, the former president's office has issued a statement which we'll be getting to shortly, but she's joining us on the telephone right now. Joyce Bauer Mokhtari, I thank you so much for your time. Good evening to you for connecting with us here on Ghana tonight. Good evening, Alfred. Good evening, and thank you very, very much for having me. Thank you. Sorry I couldn't join you via Zoom, but I'm delighted that you made the point to give me a phone call. Thank you. It, it, I, 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 can, I can understand that. Certainly, this, this comes as some, some refreshing news for you, but the number of reactions that has greeted gre this, at least from the part of the MPP, the Deputy General Secretary describes this conclusion by the Special Prosecutor as a lazy job that, in their view, this OSP could have done better than this, and they describe this conclusion as, as, as a lazy job. How does that get to you? You see, um, Alfred, when we literally major on violence, this is how we react. We're speaking to a matter of law and a matter of fact. We're speaking to matters that are in evidence and matters that are within the public domain. We are also speaking to a matter where a president of a county, Ghana, actually requested the Office of Special Prosecutor to investigate his predecessor, John Dramani Mahama, for these allegations regarding the purchase of an Airbus uh, you know, aircraft years ago. Indeed, you all know that these allegations had absolutely nothing really to do with the, uh, the person who were named. It was actually an investigation into the activities of Airbus worldwide, in the UK and also in the United States of America. There was another country. And what happened was that Airbus actually admitted, you understand, and agreed that they had committed these offenses. And what it means in law is that you will not have a full investigation because the company that is under investigation has admitted to some wrongdoing. That is where this matter ended. But of course, we decided to start to play politics with the matter, and it became almost as if this was the reason why the Office of Special Prosecutor was actually set up. Indeed, you recall that the first prosecutor told all of us, for example, that he had told President Akufuado to abandon this matter of the air bath because there was no crime and to focus on the matters of corruption in his own administration. We are all privy to these topics and privy to this conversation. You see, today, I think that we thank the Almighty, we thank the work of the Office of Special Prosecutor. We are delighted, for example, that this matter has come to its logical conclusion. As lawyers, we know what it means when they tell us that court documents are sealed, when they tell us that for some specific reasons, some key individuals or persons will not be named or contacted. We all know these things, and indeed I expect that our opponents on the other side ought to know this as well. But no. certainly because of the political capital that they were seeking to make out of it, today I am convinced that when I issued a statement in response two years ago to this matter, I clearly indicated that whatever investigations were carried out will eventually vindicate John Gamani Mahama. And that is exactly what has happened today. I am delighted that this matter has suddenly come up for discussion. I'm delighted that the Office of Special Prosecutor has decided to bring it to this logical conclusion. I'm also delighted that all of our students of the law will continue to be respectful of the law, will continue to adhere to matters of the law. And I think that if we have anything less enough, Let's demand accountability and transparency from President Akufuado and Vice President Mahmoud Gamal. I, I, I know that in the future, you, when they are put to similar shape proof, they will not come back and cry and scream and roll and make all the noises that they are making. Indeed, if we're talking about corruption, it is real. It is beyond the perception. It is what we are discussing today beyond the politics. About war, they meant this for evil. I am happy that today John Mahama stands for He stands vindicated. Indeed, this is a very thorough job by the special prosecutor. He went through the matter right from the beginning up to the end. 
indeed, even the red alert for some other individuals mentioning the matter has also been right. lifted. But, you see, let's but, 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 but I was sorry. So, so the, there was a point that you made, especially because this matter is, is has, has been heavily politicized over the period until now. And you you also make reference to the position that the NPP are taking the uh, Martin Alamisi, Brent Kaiser Amido, the former OSP, what he had indicated. But for the MPP, for instance, they may also put up that that point that to the extent that now the government official one is known, and it is. Your flag bearer, that's that's a, a, enough vindication for for the the position that they are taking. Is that is that what they went to court to seek? Is that the instruction that President Akufuado gave to the special prosecutor? Is that what he was actually asking for? Was he looking for identities when the court had clearly indicated they had good reasons why they were not making their identities known? Certainly not. They were going there to seek to embarrass, to seek to denigrate, to seek to create the wrong impression. It is the reason why this matter has traveled all the way to this day. There can be no other reasons why they were pursuing this matter, a matter that had actually come to a very logical conclusion, a matter that the United Kingdom courts had indicated they were no longer interested in prosecuting or even investigating. You see, let's not mistake. I believe they haven't gone their way. I believe that they are probably ashamed because they believe that this was actually going to create some challenges for John Mahama. Indeed, all of the things that they planned, all the machinations, have literally fallen flat. I think that we are students of the law, we should continue to obey the law, we should continue also to respect the, all the facets of the law. Indeed, today the OSP has done his job. He has been pursuing this matter on the instructions of President Akufuado. He is done. I've heard even other people claim that are now very, very totally discredited. Attorney General can also go out there and, and investigate the matter well. They chose to go to a special prosecutor. I know I that there are many other markets that require the attention of a special prosecutor. I uh, hope that they will, in like manner, and mm. with similar alacrity, and with same speed, go ahead and do that with all the other markets of corruption Ma that we are talking about. Madam Oktari, and, 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 and finally... We have made no losses. Right. We have been told that Mr. Mahama received no bribes or kickbacks, that there was no criminality or any criminal offenses that could be actually ascribed to Mr. Mahama. Indeed, like I indicated, he stands tall, he stands vindicated, uh, uh, and we are grateful uh, that this uh, uh, matter has As stated, come. as stated by the OSP, and, and quickly, this one before I let you go, there's that aspect of the OSP's observation, which I want to just bring you, 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 you in on, and also seek your thoughts. To the extent that the OSP says it ought reasonably to have occurred to the former president, John Mahama, and the government of Ghana, that the familial relationship between him and his brother were bound to raise reasonable suspicions of improper conduct and dealings. In his view, that's one of, of, of concern. It should not happen again. Well, but at least I'm sure he very immediately also added in the same paragraph or the preceding paragraph that he detected no conflict of interest. In indeed, him. yes. Because indeed his brothers were businessmen and that he also cautioned that in future, maybe he should not actually... He, uh, you know, this, but of course, that is his brother. You know, and these are his brothers. So naturally, there will be a set, and maybe that is even the reason why this matter traveled as long as it did. Look, I want us to focus on the substantive issues that have come up. All that everybody was anticipating was that there was some criminality and that they were going to accuse Mr. Mahama of some allegations of some kickbacks and what have you. None of these things have happened. You know, there's a very thin line between conflict of interest issues and matters to do with ethics. So yes, we stand caution, we will take it as a test, but what I think has come out of all of this is that Mr. Mahama has been exonerated of any wrongdoing. The rest, as I say, are exercises and they are debates. We can all undertake them as we go along. Well, but the most uh, important thing for us is that on this day, the special prosecutor who was tasked by His Excellency President Adudanko Akufuado to undertake this investigation has come out clearly to indicate to each and every citizen of Ghana that Mr. Mahama has been exonerated and right. cleared of all allegations of corruption. And I, I thank Which you so much. Right. And I thank you very much for making the time to join us. As always, appreciate you.
Joyce Bauer Mokhtari speaks for the former president, a flag bearer of the NDC, John Dramani Mohammed, who has, um, according to the OS, OSP's own pronouncements today, been cleared of any corruption, corruption related offenses in the issue of this Airbus transaction. Now, and earlier today, uh, we got a statement from the office of former president, John Dramani Mahama. But then again, he has been talking about it for quite a while. In fact, when he met the media, there was a question that was posed to him on this matter. And, and this is what he had to say with relation to the investigations on this Airbus scandal until today, before the OSP spoke. Take a look. The office of the OSP. I won't. Thank you, sir. It is an addition to anti-corruption fights. And indeed, the people who set up the OSP office today are the ones trying to remove the special prosecutor. And they are the ones who are insulting the special prosecutor more than anybody else. <laughs> and so the special prosecutor is doing his job. And um, I expect that if we remove political interference in his work, that office can be more you know, efficient. Today, cases that the special prosecutor took up I mean, one cannot understand uh, uh, what is happening. You see what happened between the special prosecutor and Yoko. The docket has been sent to Yoko. Yoko said we haven't received any document and all that and all that. And so the case has been left to die. Today, the one million uh, something uh, dollar something under the bed case is effectively dead. And don't think that it died because justice prevailed. It died because of political interference. Another case, PPA went to court and the judge ordered the unfreezing of the accounts. The day he ordered the unfreezing of the accounts, the next day all the money was withdrawn from the accounts. And so we need to create an environment where the special prosecutor can work and work on behalf of the people of Ghana. And so I will not scrap that office. I will strengthen that office to be able to investigate those who are leaving office who have been harassing the prosecutor and also investigating my people who will fall foul of the law. Thank you very much.